In the past couple months, Adobe has been dabbling with creating generative AI tools, both in Photoshop and in Adobe Premiere. But they also have their signature flagship product, Adobe Firefly, which uses generative AI to generate, well, these sorts of things. Just from looking at the text to image page here, you can see some of the crazy images that have been generated just by people typing in a few simple prompts. And if I typed in a prompt of my own, say for example, a dog running on the moon smiles a huge grin, it also has purple eyes, and I hit generate, we can see that it's automatically gonna start to create those images for us automatically. Look at that, just a couple seconds and we have a dog running on the moon and he's got a big toothy grin. But instead of making his eyes purple, it made the moon purple, interesting. Now this is pretty cool and these are some pretty happy dogs, but there's actually a few tips and tricks that you might not know about that you can actually apply to actually get better results out of Adobe Firefly. So let's get into those now. But before we go generating some more cool images here, I do wanna give a quick shout out to our AI newsletter, Neural Frontier. Neural Frontier is an AI themed newsletter that we publish weekly here and it has all the latest tips and tricks, tools, news, everything that you're gonna to need to know if you're interested in the AI and tech space. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. But with that being said, let's get back to Adobe Firefly. So as we can see here, by the default model, we're actually using Adobe Firefly Image 3, which is better than Firefly Image 2 which is a little bit older. Now, if we keep using Firefly 3, we can see that fast mode is now available. Generate with lower resolution images for faster ideation. Upscale later for one credit per image. Now, essentially what they're saying here is if you like images just generated fast, you can do that using their lower resolution model. And when you actually find an image that you like, you can pay a credit to upgrade it to a higher resolution image that you might wanna download for later. So fast mode, I'm gonna say, you know, we'll keep it on for now. But we can see we can also increase the image resolution by just hitting this upscale button. Upscales the image to 2K images and it uses one credit per image, which you do have to purchase. Down here in the bottom right, we actually have our history so we can see all the images that we've generated thus far. We also have our prompt suggestions, which I've got enabled by now. Now prompt suggestions essentially takes what you've typed in and makes it a little bit more detailed so that you can get better results. Essentially, it's more finely tuned for this specific model so that you get better images. But you know what? I really like this first image here. I mean, come on, look at that. It doesn't just look like such a little happy guy. The other ones are good too, but again, they go for like a purple moon and in the background and you know, like purple stars. Whereas this one just, he's got the purple eyes and everything and bouncing on the moon. So we can hit edit here and we can do something called generative fill, generate similar, uses composition reference, uses style reference, create a design, design Instagram posts, flyers, etc. using the Adobe suite. Things like adding text, shapes and graphics, creating social posts. But in this case, we're gonna do something called generative fill. So if I click on this and I highlight the image that I want, let's say in the background here, I wanna do this and we'll, you know, we'll erase that section. So we'll say add a rocket ship flying through the sky with a cat image on it, for example. And so I've erased this area here that I wanted to actually fill that image in at. And we'll say add, and I'll hit the generate button here. And we're gonna get a couple of revised versions of this image with that blank section now filled in with my prompt, but still matching the rest of the image. Okay, here we've caught a clip art of a, of a rocket. Okay, we've got <laughs> another clip out of a rocket and then another one there. Not, not really digging that. So we're gonna just go ahead and revert that and we'll, uh, we'll go back here. And we can also do things like panning, you know, move it around, but also we can go ahead and expand it if we want to. So let's say I really like this image, but I want it to be bigger. I'm gonna remove that prompt and I'm just gonna say generate. And what it should do is using this initial image as a baseline reference, we're gonna go ahead and actually expand the image. So hopefully, yeah, look at that. We've got an even bigger image with more space, more of the moon, et cetera. And we've got a couple different variations that all essentially look the same. I'm personally a big fan of this second one the best though, because it kind of has more of the moon rocks and the lunar terrain matched out perfectly. So I'm gonna hit keep for this one. And boom, there we go. So now we can also do things like remove. So say for example, I wanted to get this dog out of here. I was like, you know what? This dog, don't need him anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna remove him. I can just go ahead and we're just gonna erase him from the image. We're just gonna erase him out of the image. You're never gonna even know that he was there. And we go ahead and hit add again. We hit remove. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and replace that dog with something else that would fit the background, which in this case is most likely just gonna be the stars. And I guess we have the sun poking over the lunar horizon. Um, but as you can see here, yeah, we've got that generative fill and that dog is gone. Obviously in that case, I would never do such a thing because this guy just looks so happy, but you can see the different types of things that you can do with adding, generating, adjusting, making 
changes to an image that you've already generated previously or upscaling an image that you previously thought you wouldn't want to use but now want to use. We can also adjust the brush size, brush hardness and opacity for example. One thing just to keep in mind is that if you navigate away from your page and you're not signed in you might accidentally lose your images so just be careful about that. All right so we've got another set of images here and I just simply use the prompt dog. I know not very original but that's kind of the point. Now, if we hover over this button that says edit and we go to the generate similar button and click on that, we can see that we're actually gonna start generating similar images based on this first image. So using this as a reference, creating similar images from that. So we can see here, we've got these cute little dog faces, but they're all a little bit different than one another. Now it's important to note that the base one that you're gonna have is not gonna maintain its 100% stylized design. You can see here, we've got things like blue backgrounds and slightly off colored dogs and different faces and things like that. It's generating similar, but not the same. Now, although these quick tools are really cool at generating similar images and making adjustments, the way that you can actually get the best results is by using the customization options in the sidebar here. Things like selecting whether you want the content type to be art or a photo very important. Whether you want the aspect ratio to be landscape, portrait, square, widescreen, etc. We can actually set here for photo a reference or a few reference photos that we want the AI to use when creating that new image. For the style section here, we can select what sort of visual intensity we have, whether we want it to be lessened. We also have the ability to adjust strength, which is the style matching and effects. So we can say visual intensity, we'll put that a little bit on the lower end and Strength will put it you know, on the upper end. And for the actual style itself, we can either select one of their default ones. So let's say this kind of neon looking 80s one here, we'll set that as a reference. And we actually have multiple effects we can go through and click on to actually determine what sort of effects get applied to the image itself. Things like our layered paper, synth wave, painting, digital art, hyper-realistic. So let's do a couple ones that are hyper-realistic because these are obviously highly stylized images of a dog, but let's do one that's highly realistic. So we'll do photo and for the composition, we'll do something that is more realistic looking. We'll take out the 80s. Actually, you know what? We'll keep the 80s kind of synth wave image in there. See what we get. We'll do hyper-realistic for color and tone. We're just going to do a nice, simple, warm tone. Lighting is going to be something that's like golden hour. Camera angle can be automatically assigned and We'll just simply type in a nice beach sunset in Hawaii. So let's do that. And now with all of those features applied here, we can go ahead and hit the generate button and see exactly what we get. And there we go. In just a few quick seconds, we have those images generated for us. Although at first glance, this may just look like an AI image. This last one here, it could have fooled me to be honest. These first ones you can kind of see like, you know, obviously there's gotta be some sort of filters applied and maybe they've used a little bit of Photoshop to make the image work well. This image, there's something weird in the water. It's casting a large shadow, doesn't really make any sense. The person kind of looks weird in the water and their shadow really doesn't really work in the correct way. But this last one here, if at first glance, if you were just scrolling through Facebook, you might not be able to tell exactly that this is an AI generated image. So let's go ahead and do exactly what we did before. We can, you know, either download it, upscale it, or if we hit on this button, we can do generate similar and generate more images based on that as a reference. As we can see here, we've got those same sort of images, but this one really looks the most hyper-focused. So again, if we wanted to go in and use as a composition reference or use as a style reference, say I really like this one, but I wanted to do a different prompt. I can simply hit this, hit use as style reference, and now that is our new reference photo for the style. And I could type in something like a nice sunrise in Portugal using that Hawaii photo as our style reference. And let's see what we get. Same sort of style, but as you can see here, because I've adjusted the prompt to say Portugal, not Hawaii, it looks different in the overall landscape. Again, you look at that and you go, wow, it's a beautiful photo, but it's AI generated. Honestly, it's, it's interesting to look at this and go, wow, that's a stunning photo, appreciating its beauty, but knowing that it's not actually real. The idea here is that just from a few simple prompts, you now know how to go ahead and create images in Adobe Firefly and make them tailored to what exactly you're trying to create. Do you wanna make a hyper-realistic photo? Select the photo content type, give some real reference photos and take off any effects. If you wanna make something hyper-stylized and futuristic, well, throw on some synth wave, throw on something that looks a little bit out of the ordinary, maybe make it look like a painting, add a whole bunch of effects onto it. 
you know, you could do painting and digital art. We could regenerate this image again. And all of a sudden it goes from a hyper realistic image of a sunset in Portugal to a hyper stylized version that is clearly something out of a painting. The effects and the tools are all up to you. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Josh Mountain and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.